Hey kids, Grandpa here. I just wanted to do a little short sort of a day in the life kind of video. You know, what it's like to live aboard a sailboat. And so I thought I'd give you guys a little bit of a brief upload and uh, update as to what, what's going on. So, slept in this morning. Man, did I sleep in. I slept all the way to 6.30. I can't believe it. Uh, just, just, just warm, you know, just nice and comfy. Nice and comfy. It was awesome. So, uh, <laughs> Lily... Stop. Stop. Miss Lily finds it's her job to woof at every noise or everybody that walks by. So she's woofing a lot, and I'm trying to break her of it. The byproduct of that is, is everybody up and down the dock knows Miss Lily's name because they hear me yell at her. So it's kind of funny. But anyhow, got up this morning, took Miss Lily for a walk first thing, and uh, took some garbage over to the garbage dumpster. And then, you know, I'm not on my boat, I'm on somebody else's boat, I, and so I don't really, you know, I don't want to use any of their their systems here, so uh, I ran over to the local grocery store, and I got myself some breakfast. So, what we're having today is we're having a little fruit salad, it's a seasonal fruit, uh, some melon and pineapple and grapes and that kind of stuff. Have a little cup of yogurt, or uh, 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 grapefruit rather, a uh, cup of yogurt. A banana and some orange juice and I may have a, a roll I, I bought a roll I may have a roll have a little carb in there too so anyhow I get done with this this morning uh, and of course I'm watching some YouTube videos while I'm eating breakfast um, and then we're gonna go do laundry that's gonna be the big excitement of the day and I'll have some filming of that here in a little bit so right now I'm gonna eat my breakfast and we'll have more for this day in the life while boat shopping here in Florida so you can get a better feel for what's going on now, during breakfast, I am just relaxing and watching a YouTube video. I have already made a bunch of emails and calls to people about boats this morning before I went to get breakfast. And um, we'll follow up with them and see how things go. Sunshine and 78 degrees here in beautiful St. Augustine, Florida. Chore day. Waiting for the laundry. <laughs> Me and Miss Lily. Just having a ball. Oh, waiting here at the marina at the laundry facility. I really like this marina here in St. Augustine. It's uh, showers are free, which is nice. Dollar fifty to do a load of wash, dollar to dry. Can't argue with that. I think up in Alaska, I was paying three fifty to wash and three fifty to dry a load. Crazy. And four or five bucks depending on where I went to go take a shower. So. Kudos to you, St. Augustine, Florida, or here at the River's Edge Marina, because that's a that's a whole lot better deal. Miss Lily's just sitting there. She's jumping up on everybody and harassing everybody that goes by, being her usual pain in the butt self. Hold on, Matt. There you go, Lily. Can you see everybody? Hey, say hello. Can you say hello? Yeah, well, that's Miss Lily. <laughs> So I just hanging out here. It's 78 degrees, beautiful sunny day, nice gentle breeze blowing. Day in the life, guys. So while sitting here doing laundry, I guess one of the guys here in the marina recognized me from YouTube. How cool is that, huh? That's wild. Beautiful flowers here at the River's Edge Marina. Just gorgeous. You don't see anything like that up in Alaska. You know, guys, sometimes you just got to stop and smell the roses. Or look at the pretty shore birds. Not really sure what this fellow is looking to eat there on the beach, but he's sure pretty to look at. Here I decided to go ahead and shoot a 360 view around the marina. I thought you guys might want to take a look and see what it looks like. This was uh, early morning and the uh, tide's going out. The marine office was there off to the distance and the left. This is uh, Hurricane Annie's restaurant. And there's the boat I'm staying on. It's a uh, Privilege 37. Hey kids. All right, no, we're not on the road again. Well, we are and we aren't. We are in the truck and we're driving down the highway, but we're going over to go look at a boat right now. Uh, talking to some folks that got a Cal 36. Now I know this is not the boat I was going to buy or thought I would look at, but I have owned two cows in the past. I owned a cow 30 and a cow 31, and I must admit I do have an affinity for them, and it just kind of feels natural, I guess, to buy a cow 36 for that to be my next boat. So, I don't know. 
I don't know if I'm going to buy this boat or not. I'm just now going over and looking at it. Uh, we'll have to go over and take a look and see. The good news is I could possibly just sell my truck and buy the boat and not be in a situation where I have to mess around with uh, boat payments or a mortgage or sweat out having to deal with any of that. Now, of course, the boat's a 1969. It's a really old boat, uh, as all the cows are, and I am sure it needs everything. But, you know, we can get started on that, and we can start adding to it and improve things as time goes on. So, uh, I guess, you know, that would just be great to have all the content of upgrading and fixing stuff as we go. Uh, it is a 36-footer, so it's a nice uh, long boat. Cows tend to be fairly narrow, so I doubt it has more than about a 10-foot beam. Um, it's a full keel design boat, so it should be a really good boat. The thing about the old cows is they're built like a brick, you know what? Uh, really super solid fiberglass on them. So, anyhow, we'll see. I'll have some more film when we get over there. Hey, kids. So, here's a boat I'm looking at. It's Cal 36. It's got electric panel, refrigeration, 1969, it's an older boat. It, uh, has a propane stove, it's not gimbaled, it's not mounted there. Small sink, a couple of drawers for storage. It's got a settee here that also can fold down to become another place to sleep. Really nice, comfortable seating with lots of storage underneath of it. You've got to open the seat cock. Okay, we had to stop the filming there for a little bit because the guy who was trying to sell me the boat realized that he was running the engine but didn't have the seacock open to allow the cooling water to come in and flow, so. Yeah. Let the water flow. Well, that bilge actually looks pretty dry, doesn't it? Oh yeah, it's dry. Cool, okay. It's dry, it's uh, pretty clean, I mean, for as old as it is, it's really very clean. My concern is, is this compression post. I don't know if you can see it from this angle, but you can see a little bit of a davit right there and a crack. And that tells me the compression post underneath of it's giving way a little bit. Could be a little, could be a lot. So I'd like to know what that's gonna cost to fix, but pretty nice little bathroom. This is your shower. You can see here he's replaced his port light. That's the new one. He has all the others here in the box ready to go in. They're just not installed yet. But a couple of things I really like about this boat is the raised deck here in the galley, where you sit, is very comfortable. You've got a lot of lot of natural light and big windows all around, so you can see quite a bit. And see, that's nice because you can sit here and see out and around. Ah, that's right. That's the only you know. Deal. And that's a bed too, double bed. Right. This is a double bed. The V berth sleeps too. Yeah. And then you've got the quarter berth here, which I can put yeah. a mattress and sleep person on that. One or two people. Yeah. 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 Okay, a couple of things I like about this boat. There's only three steps up from the cockpit up uh, down into the galley, which is nice for the dog. I don't like the fact that the sail traveler is right through the middle of the cockpit. That kind of is just in everybody's way. There is 280 watts of solar power up on the roof. There is an autopilot for the boat. Um, but still, it's in pretty rough shape, and it's going to need just a lot of work. So these were kind of my main negatives. So here you can see the solar panels that are mounted. They had to move the traveler forward up to where they have it now, the, the sail traveler, because they built the bimini and had these solar panels, which are now in the way. So they just kind of ran a rope around it. Here we are up on the four peak. Pretty typical, some cracking in it, but not too bad. It looked like it was pretty dry boat. Um, fiberglass looks in pretty good shape. It's got an old manual windlass up on the front. You got to put a steel bar in that slot and crank it back and forth. Frankly, it's just about as much work as just pulling in the uh, anchor by hand. And in this case, you know, the anchor is only 25 feet of chain in all roads, so it'd be pretty easy for someone to pull that up. But there's a roller furling and there's some anchors. Nice boarding ladder mounted on the side. So there you go. 1969 Cal 36. Little basic boat. The guy's asking 16000 for it. Could be a good deal, but that compression post has me worried.
Hey kids, so I just got done looking at that cow, 36 foot cow, 1969, and uh, just want to go over my thoughts about the boat. Sad thing is, is that it's got it having compression post failure. So what that means is, is that the mast steps onto the deck. Underneath the deck, there is a wood post that runs through the cabin area of the boat to the floor. There it sits on a raised area of fiberglass. Underneath that raised area of fiberglass, there is a wood structure that supports that fiberglass and runs all the way down to where the uh, bottom of the boat is, where it mounts into, onto the keel. So what happens with some of these old cows, um, and, and in fact almost all of them, is that wood underneath the hull gets exposed to weather, age, air, and starts to decay and rot. And in this particular case, this boat's mast has collapsed about half inch to three quarters of an inch. You can see in the fiberglass, there's a divot caved in where the wood post sits and there's cracking into fiberglass, indicating that it's having pretty good compression post failure. Now, to me, that is a real simple go, no go question. Compression post failure, no go on the boat. Easy to make that decision. Unfortunately, I kind of like cows. I've owned a couple of them before. I'm kind of partial to them. Um, they have a certain amount of familiarity to me. More importantly, the hull on a cow is really laid up as a thick, sturdy boat. You could run that boat up on a reef and not damage it, not sink it. You can run that boat. I have rammed a dock with my old cow when I went to, I was pulling into a slip going in way too fast, assuming I was just going to be able to hit reverse as I got up in there. I went to go hit reverse and it stalled out. And so I was doing about two knots or so and rammed into the deck in the slip. So the, the boat hit the deck, it lurched forward, it put a good two inch deep uh, uh, hole in the, the treated uh, wood post that was the form of the deck, didn't hurt the cow one bit. I also rammed a big uh, log, a submerged log one time with a cow uh, while I was in the Pacific Northwest and it didn't hurt the boat one bit. It didn't put a scratch or a dent or even a ding on it, nothing. So the hulls on these boats are laid up really well. They're, they're really heavy duty. Um, so the question comes, you know, buy the boat and rebuild the compression post? Might be something to consider. Uh, the guy's wanting $16,000 for a 36 foot cow with a universal uh, uh, diesel in it. Um, there's some other things I'm not too happy about with the boat. The head is tiny. Uh, I don't know if I can fit my fat butt in there. Um, so there are some negative aspects of it that I have to consider, but I would be able to just sell my truck and buy that boat, not have to worry about payments or financing. And uh, that's certainly attractive to me. So I don't know. I'm gonna have to give a lot of long, hard thinking about this boat and figure out what I wanna do. It appears to me this boat has sat up on the hard for a while. The people that own it now, I think they got that boat for next to no money, if no money at all, and uh, are now trying to sell it. And, uh, you know, the sales are old, I would imagine probably 1969 original sales. Um, it does have a roller furling up on the jib sail. There is a, uh, uh, a windless but it's a manual windless not an electric windless um, evidence that there used to be a life raft bolted up on the deck that's been removed and those holes were plugged uh, evidence there used to be a, um, a hitch post up on the up on the uh, up on the bow that's been replaced um, I don't know boat needs a ton of work not really looking for a project boat. 
but you know there is something nice about the idea of just going ahead and uh, buying something and not having to worry about making a payment on it so I don't know we'll think long and more about it if any of you guys have any knowledge or experience in replacing a compression post in a 1969 1969 I was born in 58 so I was 11 years old when that boat was made and I'm 59 years old so what does that make that a 58 year old boat yeah that might be a bit of a stretch even for me so but if you know how to replace a compression post in there and have an idea about what that would cost let me know there's a video out actually by a company that uh, um, manufactures marine hardware and they just took a Cal 40 and did a complete restoration on it um, and I don't remember if that restoration included replacing the compression post or not. I think they specifically chose the boat they did because the compression post wasn't that bad. But, man, they stripped that boat down to the bare bones, put it in a jig, ran it upside down, did all kinds of work to it. So, something to think about. Well, there you have it. This is a day in the life of uh, someone's boat shopping here in uh, St. Augustine, Florida. Cal 36 turned out to be a nice boat. Now on the drive home, I, I did stop by and get something neat on the way home. I came back here to the marina and uh, started working on editing this video, which is the way I spent uh, the remainder of the evening, that and on the phone, talking with some friends and discussing the boat and the possibilities and the cost of fixing the compression post. And it's it's excessive. You know, the problem is you gotta you gotta take the mast off, you gotta take that wood post, which is also the wall and the door going into the bathroom. So you got two walls in there to remove, and then you gotta cut the floor up to get down below it to where there's that uh, you know, the wooden steel compression post underneath the framework. Um, I mean you literally break the boat down right down to the, the very core. Um, and even then, I didn't even check the tabbing to see how well that pulled out because that's quite of a, uh, a common thing on the cows is some of the tabbing breaks loose and stuff. Uh, the tabbing is where the bulkhead walls meet the sides of the boat and, and how that's kind of glued together with fiberglass. So, so that was my day, you know. I got up in the morning, I uh, had breakfast, I went and did laundry, uh, I drove over and looked at the cow. Turned out not to be the right boat for me and came back, edited this video, had some conversations with some folks, listened to some music, and that was the extent of my day. So today, uh, this morning, I'm finishing this editing, trying to get this video out for you fine folks, and uh, we're looking at more boats, so more to come. Anyhow, guys, if you like this kind of thing, please do like and subscribe, and we'll have more for you later. Thanks. Bye.